In this FAQ, we'll be taking a look at how you can explode objects inside Cinema 4D using Cinema 4D's very cool Dynamics Engine. For the first part of this tutorial, we're using the Explode plugin. You'll find a link to this website in the description for this movie further below. There are various other plugins that you could also use. Check them out on the internet. First up, we'll import an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, this one was created and saved out with Illustrator version 8. And if we go ahead and import it, click open the hierarchy. We'll select all of these parts, right click and choose connect plus delete just to compress it down into one object. In the coordinates manager, we'll set the exposition to zero just to center the uh, just to center the text. It's up in the air, but that's what we want because we'll be dropping the text down. And if we go and add an extrude nerves, place the logo inside the extrude nerves, select the extrude nerves. And if we right click on it and choose make editable, click on the hierarchy symbol, select all of these parts, right click on the name and choose again, connect and delete to make it all one object and uh, rename it to Maxon logo. Okay, so there's our logo up in the air. If we now head to plugins and to explode and in the explode dialog, we want to change to the fracture icon, click add and then click scatter. That's the basics of breaking it apart. You could change the number of parts, close that down, but we'll just go with the default. Now it creates this explode trash. This keeps our original logo if we ever need to get back to that, but we'll leave it tucked away there hidden. If we have a look at the pieces, we've got lots of them in there, as many pieces as was defined. If we head to the MoGraph uh, menu, fracture, um, that's actually what it's creating automatically, but just to show you that's where that fracture object comes from. It's doing this all automatically for us. If we add in a floor for the text to glide with, now we'll just move the pieces up to the top of the hierarchy. And if we select both the pieces and the floor and go to the tags menu, we can go down to dynamics tags and add dynamics body to make both the floor and the pieces part of the dynamic system. If we hit play, well, the text is dropping and it is colliding with the floor great, but the object isn't fracturing into pieces. We need to change individual elements to top level. And there you can see very easily achieved. The plugin has fractured the text for us. And, um, and also we've been able to specify for the pieces to break away using individual elements set to top level. Now there is a bit of a problem at the moment with the way the pieces are falling down. And if we just step through this slowly, you can see that the pieces are staying together on the text uh, and until kind of until the text hits the floor. What we'd like is the text to start breaking away. So what we could do is to add some turbulence from this icon at the top. And if we play back now, let's see how it looks. Doesn't seem to be making much of a difference. So we'll massively increase the strength. We'll overdo it so that we can see exactly what turbulence does, this kind of crazy thing. Well, we need to weaken that down a bit. It's a little bit uh, over the top at the moment. So we'll reduce that down. So it's breaking apart nicely, but we're still getting some turbulence effects when the pieces are on the floor, which we don't really want. So we'll change the fall off for the turbulence to box and we'll move the box up in the air so that the pieces only get this turbulence at the start of the animation, just to pull them apart from each other. And then it won't interfere with the pieces once they're on the ground. Let's just hide off the turbulence. And there we can see it's creating a nice pleasing effect so far. Now, one thing that we could do is if we head to the pieces and we go to the collisions tab, we can change the bounce and the friction. And uh, if we need to, particularly the friction, just to try and stop the pieces from moving too far along the ground, we'll try and bring them to a halt a bit quicker. Another really nice thing we can do is uh, have things collide with the text so that the text only breaks apart once it's hit by this sphere that we're going to drop onto it. This is again really easy to do if we just move the sphere up in the air, place it somewhere above the X on the Maxon. And uh, this sphere is also going to need a uh, dynamics tag as well. So we select the sphere and we can right click on it and go to dynamics tags, dynamics body to add the tag. And if we just play back, it's already playing with our dynamic system. And perhaps we can adjust the bounce and the friction to try and give this sphere a really weighty feel to it. So it, it's kind of behaving as a very heavy object that's really gonna smash up the logo. 
So that seems to be going OK. If we select the Dynamics tag for the pieces, and what we need to do here is to head to the Dynamics tab and go to Trigger and change from Immediately to On Collision. What this means is that instead of the pieces dropping immediately, they wait until another rigid body collides with it. So if we play back now, you can see as the text is hit by the ball, they react to it, a really cool effect. We'll move the sphere a little bit higher up in the air and we'll make the animation a little bit longer. And when we play this back, hopefully it will smash away uh, most of the text. So most of it's going. You can see there's, there's still a few pieces that are up in the air and we need to sort these out. That doesn't look right. So if we had, if we try to get roughly where most of the text is broken away, so we just nudge forward a bit, okay, most of it's gone by then. A little trick that we can do here is to keyframe the trigger value. So if we make sure that we've got the tag selected, and if we go to trigger, and if we control click on the animation dot for trigger, that will record a value of on collision at this frame, move forward one frame, and we'll change on collision to immediately and control click on the animation dot for trigger. And what that means is that from frame 31 onwards, it will no longer just react to um, a collision, it will just tell everything to fall immediately. So the pieces that weren't falling will suddenly start falling. So that's really easy to set up that kind of effect. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask about Cinema 4D, please comment below or send us a message.